We're going to be installing Debian 13 on these mini PCs on my little server rack here. I figured I'd make a quick straightforward tutorial. This installation is going to be server orientated so we are not going to be installing a desktop environment. Lucky for us Debian 13 released yesterday at least when I recorded this video and installed everything so the first thing you have to do is go to Debian.org and you can just whack the download button. If you want a more specific thing that you know for certain you need you can just go to this different file here and just pick the actual download you'd like. Or you can probably do the same thing we're going to do here with an older version if you're after something different. The installation method we are going to be choosing is a bootable USB drive and we're going to throw that ISO on there. And the tool we're going to use to set all this up is Rufus or Rufus. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but it doesn't really matter. So you're going to navigate to the site and download it. A quick tip here, I did try the most recent version of Rufus and it did fail. It would crash every single time I tried to write to the USB device. I did use an older version I had sitting on my PC and it was 4.5. So uh, if you're having issues with the newest one and it's not working for you, try an older version like I did and that should make everything work. Once the ISO and Rufus is downloaded, you are going to start Rufus up. You should see a device uh, listed here. This would be that USB drive that you plugged in. In my case, I have a, like a USB adapter and an SD card. Literally any smaller storage device is going to work just fine for this and it should show up in this drop down. If it doesn't, then you might have to like format one or find one that does work. But basically, you're going to make sure your boot selection is set to the actual ISO you downloaded. So you'll use that little select arrow to navigate to your downloads. From there, you can set up your partition schema to GBT. We're going to use Eufy. If you're using a modern PC, this should be just fine. If you're using something really old and archaic, you might have to try like the MBR partition and some of the older like legacy boot stuff. But for most modern stuff in the last 10, 15 years, you should be fine with these settings. You can label the volume whatever you want. You could see that my device is already labeled with that because I tried this a few times. File system is FAT32. Cluster size, I'm not sure how much it matters. I'm just going with the default settings with this stuff. Quick format, uh, create the extended label and icon files. I don't think that really matters that much. But once you've got it set up and looking like this, you can smack that start button and it probably will take a few minutes depending on how uh, quick your PC is and how quick your actual storage is. Once it's done, you can eject it from your main PC and this is when you're going to actually plug it into the target PC that you want to install Linux on. In my case, it's going to be one of these little think centers and my little server rack and we're going to go from there by booting it up. As soon as you see the Lenovo splash screen or whatever brand splash screen you end up seeing, you're going to want to start hitting F12. In my case, you might have to look up your model, but you're going to smack it a bunch and you should get to like a startup menu and you can pick the device you want to boot from in our case we want to boot from that newly created usb device because that's what's going to have our linux installation and that will kick off everything we're trying to accomplish here after a few seconds of selecting that bootable device you should see this debian screen pop up and from there we're going to be prompted with a lot of things and we're just going to fill them out as so the first thing you're going to be prompted with is the actual language you want to install this in i chose english because that's my primary language you can choose whatever fits you best the next is where this server actually is going to exist. This is going to help select your time zone for your server. You could pick whatever you technically want. It doesn't really matter, but I would choose where you're having this server exist. If you remembered previously, we just downloaded that basic file and that was important because that one does come with like all the Wi-Fi stuff. There is a more even basic install where you need to have like a Ethernet cable and it gets a little more confusing when you set things up because once you unplug it, if you didn't install the proper packages, you have trouble. So from here, you're going to connect to your Wi-Fi if you downloaded the proper file. If you didn't, you might want to go back and get that slightly larger file. Now at this point, you're going to pick a host name. This will just be the name of your PC. Since I have four of these, I'm just going to do dev one, two, three, and four. But you can choose whatever you'd like. For this, this might matter later if you're doing proxies or some other thing. But for me, I'm not going to do anything crazy with this yet. And I can configure that later. So I'm just going to leave this blank. Now, this is going to be your root account. I would make sure you write this down or save this off somewhere. Because if you lose this, you will lose root access to your server and you're going to have to reinstall everything. It's not the end of the world, especially early on, but later if you were to lose it, it would be pretty sad. You're going to want this one to be pretty secure as well. Next up, you are going to have a name for your user. I don't really use a personal name or anything. Mine are mostly just generic. I just do dev and dev for both of these, but you can use your real name and choose a username that you want. This will be like the first user that you can log in that's not root. You can create more users later on, so you don't have to worry too much and you can remove these as well. You will choose a password. Again, make this different from root because you don't want someone to compromise both of your accounts. From here, you should have a menu that's uh, related to the country that you chose. This will be your time zone, so I'm just going to pick mine. 
Because this is a very simple, straightforward setup, we are just gonna use the entire disk for our partition. We're not gonna do multi-partition -part stuff. We're not gonna do any encrypted things. If you wanna do more advanced stuff, you can find a different tutorial for something like that. At this point, you'll be presented with a list of all like the actual storage devices on your machine. Make sure you do not select the USB or whatever storage device you plugged in with your little bootloader on there. And you're gonna to wanna to look for your actual like SSD or hard drive or whatever is on your PC that you're trying to install this operating system onto. At this point, like I said earlier, we're just going to put everything all in one partition. It's a lot easier to manage, in my opinion, if you're new to Linux and you don't have to worry about any other like things that you're mounting or moving around. It's just a very simplistic thing to get your feet wet. So this is what we're going to choose. At this point, it'll kind of give you a little brief rundown of what's about to happen here. And you can just do finish partition partitioning and write changes to disk. And then it will ask you one more time. You can say yes. And then you're all set. It will start doing that. Here you're going to pick a package manager. Usually you want the one that, or like the mirror. This is like where all those packages are located. You're going to want to pick the one that's closest to you. The best one, I guess certain ones might not be bad. With the United States, it's a pretty easy choice. So that's just what I picked. I just, again, go with the default pick. I'm sure if you want to get to more advanced, you probably don't really need this if you're picking other ones, this tutorial. So I just usually go with like what they recommend. This is all stuff that you can leave blank right now and set up later, depending on how you want to use your server. Again, it's a little more advanced to start using this kind of stuff and you need a good use case for it. So for now, you can leave it blank. Everything that we're doing in this installation, you can do later and change later. So nothing is like permanent that you couldn't change. This is just some package survey thing. I usually say no to all these things, but do as you want. It's a personal opinion. Now, here's an important step because this is actually going to change like how your server functions if you really want a desktop environment you can install it but that's going to eat up a lot of resources if you're just running this as a server i don't think you really need the desktop environment that is more for like your like daily driver that you're gonna like run a lot of programs on and use as like a daily device where you're browsing the web so in our case we're going to uncheck all the desktop environment stuff and just do the standard system utilities because we just want a very basic installation that we can customize and turn into a nice server as we install other packages once you've done that, it will just begin to install things. It takes a few minutes. Again, this depends on the speed of your PC because it's it should be pretty quick, though, because we're not installing a tremendous amount of stuff. And it will basically tell you the installation is complete, and then you can reboot the PC. At that point, you're going to want to pull out that USB drive so you actually boot into your actual OS installation. At this point, you'll see some like little bits of text flash on screen. I did have a weird error. I'm not sure what this is about, and I didn't take the time to look into it. I just hit enter, and then I was presented with the login. This is where you're going to put your user. So in whatever you named your basic user, you can slap that in there and then the password, and that should allow you to log in. Now from here, this is where you would start installing different packages, maybe get a web server set up. And I will make a tutorial for making a nice basic web server or even just a nice server that has a firewall, SSH, and a few other things configured so you can start your home lab journey. But some of the things I always like to install is HTOP and I like screen fetch. I don't know why, I guess it's just like a thing from the rising community, but I like to slap that screen fetch every once in a while because it does have uptime and it just gives you some cool specs and I like the little logo thing. So that's pretty much it for this video. You should have a fully installed Debian um, installation. So hopefully everything worked out. If you got any questions, just leave them in the comments.